Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very exponential very complex equation. We have e to the power e to the power z equals negative 1. I think we've done the one version the positive one before if I can remember correctly and in that problem we kind of talked about e to the e to the z equals 1 and one thing that we said was in order for e to the power z to be you know I'm sorry let me start over in order for e to the e to the z to be 1 e to the z needs to be 0 but as you know e to the z cannot be 0 well maybe e to the power negative infinity is 0 now really because infinity is not a number you can't just substitute it but it's true that if you take the limit as z approaches infinity of e to the power z I mean negative infinity that's what I meant then you'll yes you'll get a zero from there that is correct right but you can't just say e to the power of negative infinity but does this equation have a solution it does you can go ahead and check that video out but we're going to talk about a different scenario here we have a negative one so that makes things better or worse what do you think I mean obviously in the real world e to the power no number can be negative one but come on this channel is all about complex numbers and by the way I have another channel called cyber math multi-level marketing right that's what people call it if you can go ahead and check out those videos maybe you'll like them I make a lot of videos on algebra not much on geometry I know some people complain about it not a big fan and they're kind of hard to make the figures I'm lazy sorry about that but anyways let's get to work we have e to the e to the z equals negative one great so how do we handle something like this we're going to use Euler's formula or polar form so right hand side can be written as a power of e in the complex world right how do you do that easy think about plotting negative one in the complex argon plane such a fancy name right real and imaginary negative one appears right here it's on the real axis because negative one is a real number it's a complex number too but it's also real so how do you express that you connect it to the origin and then check the angle that it forms and that happens to be pi radians we always try to go radians and also um, I don't know why I need to talk about this but you remember the limit limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 1 this is only true when x is in radians not in degrees you'll get a different answer so be very careful okay I hope your professor doesn't you know trick you with that all right so where do we go from here r e to the i theta uh, modulus is 1 by the way so you don't need to worry about it we can just basically write the negative one as e to the power i pi but i pi or pi is not the only argument it's just the principal value so we're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi where n is an integer okay n is an integer zalen that's where it comes from thank you my viewers told me that so and that's a german word i think right for number probably uh so where do you go from here e to the e to the z equals e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n or 2 n pi doesn't matter no big deal same thing okay now we have e on both sides so we can natural log and that should give us e to the z equals i times pi plus 2 pi n and again to make it a little easier on yourself you can go ahead and replace n with zero and just look at the particular i mean the principal they both start with p the principal value so kind of if you want to keep it simple but no big deal we're gonna handle with this so this kind of gives us we notice that we try to unwrap it now we've gotten to another level where we have to exponentiate things of course this is going to be complex exponentiation right so how do you do that we have a multiple of i so let me go ahead and simplify this first like let's look at uh, the case n equals zero because that's kind of interesting if n is zero e to the power z is going to be i pi as you know pi is positive 
And when you have a positive multiple of pi, like 2 pi, 3 pi, pi, I mean, sorry, <laughs> positive multiple of i, like 2i, 3i, pi i, then you are basically on the imaginary axis, but on the positive kind of sort of side of imaginary axis. So i is here and it's multiple, positive multiples are also going to be on the imaginary axis or above the real x. Let's put it that way. So it's going to make a pi over 2 radians. Again, this is just the principal value or the principal argument. And again, we can just, you know, complicate it or just keep it very simple. Let's keep it simple for now, okay? So in this case, i pi is, is written as, by the way, what's the modulus of i pi? It's pi, right? It's absolute value, obviously. Because if this is pi i, its distance from zero will be pi units. Get it? It's going to be pi times e to the power i pi over 2. That's where the argument comes in. And again, if you wanted to add like 2 pi k, where k is an integer, you can do so. But I'm going to start with or continue at least with k equals 0. So I want to keep things a little simple here, you know. Pi times e to the power i pi over 2. Look, see how simple that is? Okay. Now we're going to solve for <laughs> z again. I mean, we need to solve for z. So let's natural log both sides. And that's going to give us, it's a complex number in polar form. So when you log this, you're going to get ln r plus i theta, right? And r is the modulus, remember? That's a real value, the ln. Okay, cool. Now let's see. When we do the ln, we're going to get ln pi plus i times pi over 2. So that would definitely be one of the values that you can use, but it's kind of like oversimplified. So why don't we just look at more complicated cases? I mean, if you want to, that's fine. And let's not take n equals 0, so we would end up with this whole thing. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. e to the z equals i times pi plus 2 pi n. Now, here is one thing you need to be careful about, though. You kind of have to split it up into two cases. Because if n is negative 1, then 2 pi n is going to be negative 2 pi, which is less than pi. Uh, I mean less than negative pi? Is that what I mean? Because when you add them, so here's what I'm trying to say. When you replace n with negative 1, this is going to be negative 2 pi and pi plus negative 2 pi is going to be negative. Make sense? So we're going to have to deal with a negative number. So like e to the z is going to equal i times uh, b and b is negative. So what does that, why does that matter? It does matter because if, in, and also to generalize this, if n is less than negative 1, less than or equal to, then this is going to be true. So we have to be careful because now we're going to write this as the absolute value of b, which is negative b, and that's going to be e to the power i pi over 2. But again, we can add our k here just to stick to the general solution. And then uh, we're going to natural log both sides, and z is going to be ln of negative b. By the way, uh, b represents this, the whole thing, so I'm going to back substitute it. But just notice that negative b is positive. Okay, be careful about that. i times this. Okay. And now I'm going to replace b with what it is. b is pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. I'm sorry, pi, i times pi. Okay, never mind. This is b, so pi plus 2 pi n. But I have to negate it because I want to make it positive. So it's going to look like this. And then... It's going to look like this. You want to see the whole thing like this. But this is only the negative case. And the positive case is very, very similar to this. I'm pretty sure you can do it. And it's even easier because absolute value of b is going to be just b. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.